Hey guys, this is part two of our series on LinkedIn. Today we're going to dive a little bit deeper into some of the tips and tricks and we'll answer more of your questions. You're watching Webbeat TV. So I'm talking to Mike Merrill, the president of the Social Media Club of Dallas, and we already talked a little bit about connections, um, but you have a little bit more to say about it, right? Yeah, so I think that what a lot of people don't realize is the value of LinkedIn is how many connections you have. Some people choose to make their profile private, which to me makes no sense. Why would you even be there? Right. Uh, and some of these may be CEOs, et cetera, but why even have a profile? If it's right? private. Because LinkedIn is all about being discovered anyways. Yeah. But one of the, after you've get, gotten your profile to 100% on the completion bar, yeah. you want to make sure you add all of your contacts. And they've added some really neat tools in LinkedIn. Not only can you import your contacts from Outlook and Gmail and other email tools, but you can say add colleagues, and it'll automatically bring up all the companies you've listed in your LinkedIn profile. Oh, that's so you great. can scroll through and see who you know from a previous employer. Now, I tell people, it's like, you know, if you've left on good terms and you know you were a great employee, there's no reason why you shouldn't connect to as many people that you had good relationships with. Mm -hmm. right, clearly, if you, know, you didn't have a good relationship with your manager, maybe not ask for that connection. But <laughs> yeah, okay. You know, use that not only colleagues but also classmates. So once you add your colleges in there, there's the ability to add classmates by year. It allows you to drop down by uh, year. That's great. So you can even find. So that'll help you build out your network, and you'll be surprised once you start on LinkedIn. Everyone in your network that's connected to those companies and those those colleges will actually see it in their status uh, feed that you've joined LinkedIn. Yeah. So you'll actually start to get a lot of LinkedIn requests as well, and you'll be like overwhelmed. Is very be growing, 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 growing. Very similar when you first joined Facebook. Yeah, it's exactly. Like, Why are all these people connected to yeah. me? Right. <laughs> I'm so popular. <laughs> so I definitely want to talk about connections because that's the value of LinkedIn is being connected to a lot of people, so you can find who they're connected to. So I have a very interesting fact about that. Let's take a look. Um, it's really important to have a lot of connections because <coughs> people with more than 20 connections are 34 times more likely to be approached with a job opportunity than people with less than five. That's, hmm. that's crazy, 34 times. So definitely try to connect with as many people as you can. Yeah, and when LinkedIn first started out, it actually would show how many connections you had specifically. Now they've limited it to 500 plus. Oh, really? Yeah, so on your profile, if you have more than 500, it just says 500 plus because there was this war going for who had the most LinkedIn connections. Okay, like Twitter followers. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, there's people that have over 20,000 connections, so it's... So what is this LinkedIn jail that you were talking about earlier? So it's, as a sales guy, it's happened to me a couple of times. I'm not a big fan you, of... You, you were in the LinkedIn jail? I was in what the LinkedIn jail. <laughs> so basically what happens is, is if you send too many requests to people and they say, I don't know this person... LinkedIn oh. policy will actually lock you out to where you can't add anyone unless you have their email address. So how long can you not add someone? Well, you, you basically have to send an email to customer service and asking them for the right to use it again. Oh, wow. And you had to do that a couple of times? I, I've done it a couple of times. <laughs> and part of it is, is, and this goes into the art of writing a good introduction to ask to be connected, okay. right? So yeah. don't use the default, I'd like to add you to my professional network that comes up when you make a request. Write a custom letter say, how do you know this person? Who's introduced you before? Where you met? And oftentimes, I even log that when I meet someone. I can, I document where I met them. Yeah. And you're more, much more likely to get them to accept your request. Yes, because maybe you did meet them, but you just don't remember. I mean, well, you don't. yeah, you, they don't remember where they met you. I mean, think exactly. about South by Southwest or Bald exactly. World. Exactly. Why would someone pay instead of, you know, use a free account? Yeah, so there's basically three price models, and I'm looking at the LinkedIn request, or the LinkedIn site right now. There's the business account, the business plus, and the executive. Mm -hmm. They start at uh, basically twenty four ninety five a month. I've been a business account holder probably since 2005, 2006. Yeah. The business plus is at thirty nine ninety five a month, and executive at seventy four ninety five a month. So what varies between these is not only the n amount of search results, but the amount of what's called in-mails that you can send. So with an in-mail, I don't have to be connected to them either via group or company or anything. I can just flat out send them an email. Oh, that's just nice. Just like I would knowing their email address. Yeah. So there is value in that if it's a key contact you want to get a hold of. So at the other one is you can see expanded profiles. So all of these provide the ability to, so when I go look at your profile, oh. 
when I when I have a premium account, I see more information. Even if you don't, if you if, if you're not connected to them. Absolutely. Okay. Now, for me, see, I'm a pretty I'm a pretty cheap person. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. So, is it actually worth it to pay? I tell people if you're a recruiter or in sales mm -hmm. or you're re-entering a job search, it may be worth doing. And LinkedIn is actually because they've been growing so fast with the economy. They actually have packages for job seekers as well. So I talked about the little symbols next to your profile. There's actually a job search package which will put a symbol there and tell people you're looking for a job. Yes, the little so, suitcase we were talking about. That's right. So those are kind of the three groups I tell people that it would be valuable mm -hmm. to pay it to at least trial. And you can cancel it any time. Okay, that's good to know. We also got a question from... Okay, let me say that again because I don't know. <laughs> Where are we? Oh, Chris... Chris Backus, is that how you say it? Yes. Backus. So we also got a question from Chris Backus. He's the head of social media at AT and T, and he says, um, "Have LinkedIn invites from salespeople become the new cold call?" Well, I think just like any tool, people abuse it, right? Very similar to Twitter, where you get a request to click a link. Very similar to Facebook, where someone sends you something they want to sell to you. So you know, we talked about LinkedIn jail. That's how people get in LinkedIn jail. They abuse the yeah, system. They try to right. add everyone. And LinkedIn monitors how many times you get rejected, et cetera. So if you're, people are going to try to link, connect you if they can't find your email address. So, and this is from a sales guy's perspective, having been a sales guy, if, if I can find their name on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. I'll go find their email address somewhere else. Yeah, exactly. Right? There's That's tools, smart. tools like Jigsaw and Google. If I can identify the domain, I can find someone else who works there and see what their email structure is. Like yeah. first dot last name, first initial last name. I mean, they're all kind of fairly similar. Yeah. Where it really throws you is if they use the f the middle initial. Oh. Because you can't predict it. Like you. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I think you're talking about yourself here. <laughs> yes, it throws people off. But so I think that's why you know Chris is really referring to it. he get, he probably gets at his level he gets a lot of requests to sell. Hey, I just like to have a meeting with you. Yeah. Introduce your product. So people abuse the system. Mm. Those guys are better off having someone make an introduction to Chris, right? Take it offline, whether it's a phone introduction or an email introduction. And make it a little bit more personal, I guess. Absolutely. Yeah. I would also really like to talk to you a little bit about video, because you say that that's something that they, are, that's the next step on LinkedIn. Yeah, and I, I think in our third series, we're going to talk about some of the third party applications, but today, you can you can add a video via box.net so someone can click on it and play a video in your profile. Mm -hmm. right, because there's a lot more you can add to your, add to your profile that we're going to talk about in the next episode. But one of the neat things to compete with all the other products out there that LinkedIn could add is the ability to feature an intro video. Which is great. I love that. Yeah. Love that idea. So it's rich media. I mean, it's the most authentic form of content there is. One of their trepidations may be that people may put business videos out there and use it incorrectly because they don't want to have to look at all these videos for the type of content right mm -hmm. think of even inappropriate content yeah right which could affect the brand of linkedin yeah you don't want that all right well we are going to have to stop for now we'll talk a little bit more about video um next time because yep. we still have part three to come so uh, thank you guys for watching mike where can people find you you can find me at mikemerrill.com or on twitter at mike d merrill all right, guys, thanks for watching. And don't forget to like this video on YouTube if you're watching it on YouTube. Do it. On the Welcome end. to Peppy TV. <laughs> I can't sing at all. <laughs> no that rhythm. Good. That was good, actually. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. I know. Into part two of our series on LinkedIn. Am I still on the camera?